This is part C of a problem that we saw part A of back in uh, 7.2. So here I have two functions which cut off a region, which we're calling R. I could remember what I did before, or I can stop and figure it out again. Let's see. G is a cosine curve and F is a parabola. A parabola whose hmm, vertex should be at three halves. Okay, so this guy down here is F of X. And the cosine curve up here is G of X. And I've been asked to pretend that that region R is the base of a solid. So some solid is going to come up here out of the paper. If I slice it, and they tell me specifically, if I slice perpendicular to the x-axis, me, I'm going to use orange for cheese slices. Uh, I've been told that cross-sections are squares. So if I look at the slice, it looks like a square, but it's a square with thickness. So that's my cheese slice. If I imagine here it coming up out of the page, that is a square, a square with thickness. The thickness is a teeny tiny change in x. Your, your dummy variable, your dx in this case, it's going to be whichever axis you're slicing perpendicular to. So if we're slicing perpendicular to the x-axis, the thickness of a slice is a slice is a small change in x. So we're going to write an x integral. We write with respect to x. So can I tell what the limits are? If I'm integrating with respect to x, then the limits should be x limits. It's pretty clear from this picture that the limits are from 0 to 2. And if I could think of a formula for the area of the face of every square I slice, I'm going to be able to write this integral. So I'm going to write a of x really big. So the question is, how do you find the area of a square? Well, if you can find one side of the square, then you'll square it. So the area of a square is side squared. That leaves me, the only thing left to do is figure out, do I know an expression as a function of x for the length of that blue line segment I drew. So I think I do. It's the difference, the distance between those two curves. Again, I have to kind of go through my checklist from 7.2. Is it always the same curve that's on top? Is it always the same curve that's down below? And I think we do find here that yes, the cosine curve is always the top curve. The quadratic curve is always the bottom curve. So no matter where I slice my cheese slice, the side length of my square, that's the face of every slice, is going to be the distance between, which I can find by subtracting, G and F, knowing that G is on top and F is down below. So here's what I'll write. So my integral, I mean, you wouldn't need to necessarily write this, but just to show you my thought process, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2, those are the limits on my x values, of the area times the thickness of every slice. So a of x representing the area of one face and d of x representing the thickness of each slice. In this case, I'm told that the area I'm going to find by finding the area of a square, which I know comes from taking the side and squaring it. So that variable s, that variable a, it's not that they necessarily represent something from the problem. That's just my thought process. So I know I'm going to need a formula for area, so I just called it a of x. And I know that for a square, I find the side and I square it. Well, now the only thing left to do is decide what is the side of one square face. So you can see here, I hope this comes, hope we can understand where this comes from. I replace that s inside the parentheses with this expression, g of x minus f of x. So if the side is g of x minus f of x, that whole side is getting squared. So I'm multiplying area times thickness. So that's my final answer. I've been asked to write, but not evaluate an integral. This next example, it's one we've seen before. We saw this, we did parts A and C back in 7.2. 
So I have a boundary, a region that's bounded by two different functions. This here is y equals natural log of x. This here is the line 5 minus x. And we found out this is similar to the example we did from 7.2 in your textbook. If we needed to find the area of R, we could go about it two ways. We could notice that the function, sort of the top function, changes right here, wherever, those, wherever natural log and 5 minus x intersect. And we could split this region up into two areas. And some of you did a similar problem a different way. You noticed that you could find the area under the pink curve and then add the area of this triangle. Excellent way to do it. We also found out that we could think about this function, this area differently, take our slices the other direction. And we found out that either way, totally correct. Okay, so the question, well, what I like about this question, part A didn't matter if we integrated with respect to x or respect to y. We found out in 7.2 that it did matter for part C. For part C, we had to be able to integrate with respect to y. So that was kind of cool because they, the, you know, part A, you can do it either way. Part C, you have to show that you can integrate with respect to y. Part B, let's read this here. Region R is the base of a solid. Each cross section perpendicular to the x axis is a square. Well, the only way that we know how to integrate in calculus AB or calculus BC is by slicing with uh, slices that are perpendicular to some axis. So here they've told us specifically that we're going to slice perpendicular to the x-axis. There we go, perpendicular to the x-axis. That tells me that I'm going to have to integrate with respect to x. So part A didn't matter, x or y. Part C, we had to integrate with respect to y. Here in part B, we're going to have to integrate with respect to x, which means that you're going to have to show what we already practiced last section, that we know how to split this region up into two sections. So recall that our first step was to graph the function y equals natural log of x, graph the function y equals 5 minus x. Can you see this that I did that here? And we're going to look for this intersection point. So we did that. We found out that the curves intersect when x is equal to 3.6944. So I'm going to write that number down. I'm going to call it little a just to give it something, just to call it something. a is 3.6944. Okay, and now I'm going to be able to write my integral expression. So the same way that I could split my area up into two regions, I can split my volume up into two regions. If the if letter A, in this case 3.6944, is where the top function changes, I'm going to write my volume as the sum of two integrals. One is the integral from 0 to A of the area times the thickness, plus the volume I get when I integrate from 3.6944 to 5 of another expression for area times the thickness. So here Again, they won't always be squares, but I've been told again in this problem that every slice that I take has a face that looks like a square. And I find the area of a square by finding the side and squaring it. So I tried to make those S's different colors so you can kind of see what happens here. So between zero and three, oops, that's not supposed to be zero. Okay, thank you for your patience. I've changed all those lower limits. They should, I should be integrating from 1 to A. The, um, between 1 and 3.694, I would find the side of a slice by finding the distance between the x-axis and the natural log function. So I've replaced this orange s with this function, natural log of x. And after 3.6944, and up to x equals 5, I still have the same formula for the volume of a cheese slice, so the side squared times the thickness. 
but in this case, that distance across the side of a square has changed. So I have my second function, 5 minus x squared.